Hey, you just caught me in the middle of editing another Great Racer Cinema Productions video. Yeah, it plays CDs pretty well, but wait, that's not what you wanted to see, right? No. The Sega CD is a game console first, and a, um, CD player second. And of course, a, um, it has an extra 12.5 MHz Motorola 68000 processor, which means that a lot of potential can be had with this extra chip, boosted to the max with extra power and arcade-like quality and, of course, with CD-quality soundtrack to boot. That's why it's called the Sega CD. Yeah, with all these impressive specs in mind, you'd think that, well, developers would actually take advantage of this powerful chip and use it alongside the Sega Genesis's original processor, the slower 68,000, but no. Several Sega CD games were basically just a um, deluxe edition Sega Genesis games. Like, for example, Earthworm Jim Special Edition. Yeah, it's actually an improvement on Earthworm Jim, but... Not much has changed. The, uh... It... The, the stages in a uh, Earthworm Jim don't even bother to... Special Edition don't even, Still don't even bother to uh, use... The Sega CD scaling hardware at its, say, uh, best. Although... It does have CD quality soundtrack and actually some improvements to gameplay alongside a new weapon for Jim to use. Yeah, so it is a pretty cool addition. Yeah, and say, um. There are also a, uh, several killer exclusive a, uh, games on the, uh, the Sega CD like Snatcher, but I only have three games with me. Yeah, I've got a small collection of Sega CD games with me right now. Actually four, because I also have Silpede, which sadly I can't play, because it's pretty scratched, but that's what you expect if we're getting like old CD games from the 90s. You get games and they have a lot of scratches. Yeah, this whole CD technology was actually pretty new and opened up a huge gateway into making kick-ass games. So, what are you waiting for? Let's take a look at the impressive power of the Sega CD. Now, if you're expecting Jurassic Park and the Sega CD to be anything like the Sega Genesis version, a game where you're playing as Alan Grant's running around shooting dinosaurs or a velociraptor taking out dinosaurs with its sharp teeth. Well, you'd be sorely disappointed because, well, this is a point-and-click game. And this is actually a pretty interesting game. And I'll explain why in a moment. As I've said before, Jurassic Park on the Sega CD is a point-and-click game. Yeah, it's not an action game at all. It's nothing like the Sega Genesis version of Jurassic Park. This is a game where you actually have to think and... You actually have to uh, think about, say, uh, how to use the items in certain situations. There's actually strategy involved here. It's not just another one of those, like, a uh, action games. And this, I believe, is one of the few point-and-click games on the Sega CD. If you want, you can interact with certain objects in the game and learn about dinosaurs. Yeah, this one definitely resembles a bird.
Yeah, it really puts that 650 megabytes to good use, eh? Now here's something odd about this game. Even though it is, well, a Sega CD game, it doesn't actually uh, fully utilize the Sega CD sound. Oh look, we got ourselves a uh, pair of pliers. Yeah. I wonder what we'll use those for. Yeah, it doesn't utilize the, uh, the Sega CD's CD quality sound. It just uses a uh, variation on the uh, on the Sega Genesis Gems driver. Yeah, at least so that's what it sounds like. It sounds like typical Sega Genesis music. Kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah, the whole objective of this game is well to basically think about where to go and well basically think about what to do. There's strategy involved and. If you uh, have the chance, you can really uh, uh, enjoy this game, if you're into that kind of game. Yeah, point and click games are not for everyone, and, well, the nerd's not into them. I can understand that. It's a game where you have to use intelligence, and, well, not just brainlessly go around shooting dinosaurs. Yeah. Sadly, this game doesn't use the Sega Genesis mouse, even though it is a point-and-click game. Yeah, let's see if we can use the, uh, the pliers on the door. It looks like we can't use the pliers on the door, so we're gonna have to uh, uh, switch it back to a cursor. Oh look, there's the T-Rex skeleton. You remember that from the movie? Remember when the T-Rex destroyed the uh, the T-Rex skeleton? That was a cool moment. Yeah. Very interesting game and well for a um, one reason and one reason alone. Yeah, the reason why it's interesting is because it's one of the few Sega CD games out there that's nothing like its Sega Genesis counterpart. The other games that I know of that are nothing like their Sega Genesis counterparts, well, the other Sega CD games that I know of that are nothing like their Sega Genesis counterparts are Prince of Persia, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the Terminator, because even though it is a side-scrolling action game, it has a vastly different feel and style to the, uh, the Sega Genesis version. Bram Stoker's Dracula, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, and the Japanese exclusive Shadowrun, which is also very different from its Sega Genesis counterparts. And of course, it doesn't have orcs in it. Yeah, apparently the Japanese hate orcs. I don't know. I don't know why they didn't include orcs, yeah. That's all I have to say about a uh, Jurassic Park and the Sega CD, so... Yeah, might do a full review on this game sometime, but... This is a uh, video about the Sega CD itself, so... Let's move on to the next game. Next up is Starfire. If you want an example of what the a, uh, Sega CD can do in terms of full motion video, well, there you go. I don't have a, a Sewer Shark nor a uh, Night Trap, so this is the uh, the closest you're going to get to a uh, demonstration of a uh, FMV cutscenes. And of course, well, because it's a CD-based console, it has to have, like, every game has to have full motion video cutscenes. Yeah, because, well, CD opened up the uh, gateway to a uh, possibilities. Yeah, with CDs, games could do video. And that was a big deal, and why... Sega, of course, tried to hype the console up. Yeah, it's pretty cool, the uh, the intro of 
Starfire is pretty cool. It's voiced by the same guy who played as a uh, Worf from Star Trek The Next Generation, the, uh, the Goog Klingon. Yeah, not much else to say. So, uh, yeah, let's move on to the game itself. Yeah, the menu music is kind of peculiar. One of the, uh, the strangest bits of menu music I've heard in any game. Alright, so the game starts out with an intro cutscene of a, uh, which kind of a, uh, enemy and, well, boss you'll be going up against. Yeah, this is the, uh, the first boss, Zars Vur. Or Vur, or however you want to pronounce it. Yeah, it's some kind of alien name, so yeah. This is the, uh, the guy that you're supposed to shoot at this is your, uh, the main target. Yeah, every level has their uh, own evil alien baddie you should try to shoot down. So, yeah, there's not much else to say, so let's talk about gameplay. As stated on the, uh, the back of the box, this is not your typical FMV game. FMV stands for Full Motion Video. This is a game where you actually, of course, get to control the tank. And, not only this, but it actually pulls off some the uh, 3D effects. Yeah, it's polygon 3D, polygonal 3D, but still pretty impressive. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of uh, Star Fox. And, of course... While well, the background itself is a flat plane, the, uh, the ships and other area uh, things you go up against are in early polygonal 3D, which is pretty impressive for the Sega CD. And Silpede also uh, pulls off a similar effect, which is pretty cool. Yeah. You can get upgrades to your artillery. But you always have to uh, uh, be cautious of a... Uh, enemies when you're trying to shoot them down. This game is not easy, even on its lowest setting. Yeah. You can find upgrades to your artillery, but... You have to be careful while trying to shoot them down. It's best you go at full speed. After all, these are the same aliens that the Earthlings didn't stand, ch stand much of a chance against, um, unless if it was the, uh, the Chosen One, the main hero. Yeah. I don't want to really talk too much about the game because this is a, um, a video about the console, so let's just end it here. And move on to the next game. Ooh, looky here! Something that the Amiga version doesn't have. A full motion video cutscene. Well, the Amiga version was on floppy disks after all. I haven't played the Amiga version itself, but both versions are technically the same. Except the Amiga version's intro has the, uh, the car just going sh forwards. That's it. Not nearly as cool as the full motion video intro that the Sega CD version has. Well, at least in my opinion. Oh, and there are also a, uh, descriptions on the, uh, the teams in the, uh, the game itself. As you can tell, Jaguar XJ220 is a racing game. And not an FMV style racing game like Mega Race. No, this is a traditional racing game that is pretty much similar to OutRun, except here you're racing in the uh, circuits instead of, well, going from point to point. Since we never got OutRun on the Sega CD, this is the, uh, the closest that we're ever going to get. Yeah, this is the closest that we're ever going to get to a Sega CD counterpart to OutRun. And... It's pretty much the uh, the same as the Amiga version of a uh, Jaguar XJ220. It's still a pretty great racing game. 
And of course, it definitely uses the uh, Sega CD's scaling hardware to its say, uh, best. It actually, of course, looks better than the uh, Outrun on the Sega Genesis. It might not look like much, but you have to keep in mind, this is a really early Sega CD game. And of course, say, um, Sega CD games weren't, say, uh, pushing the limits of the system back then. However, this game pales in comparison to a lot of the later core design games, in fact, all of them. This is just the bare minimum compared to those games because their later stuff were really pushing the uh, Sega CD to its absolute limits and of course showing off what it can do and to prove that the Sega CD is more than just, well, an FMV machine. But it still puts that extra Motorola 68000 processor to good use. And this game, in my opinion, alongside the Batmobile sections in Batman Returns, are two of the uh, best uses of the Sega CD scaling engine when it comes to racing games. Batman Returns is also what Outrun on the uh, Sega CD should have been if it was made. Yeah, not much else to say here, but definitely give this game a, a chance if you got a Sega CD and make sure to strap in that CD player so that it doesn't fly out. Yeah, I highly recommend you to get this game if you uh, have a Sega CD and, well, it's definitely a must for your uh, racing game collection on the Sega CD, but that's a rare breed though. Very few racing games are even made for the Sega CD. Yeah. It might not be impressive at first, but it is a fun game. And definitely has the same great gameplay that the Amiga version has, but on a CD add-on with CD quality soundtrack. Yeah, let's just say I move on to my final thoughts on the console itself.